Hi, my name is Greece. I hope you will watch the video first to last moment. Pretending that she's stepping out to run errands, Jasmine is actually slipping down. She wants some space. Gino has been in city for a week. While they've had coitus only formerly, they've had multiple fights. Like numerous people, she calls a friend to bandy the matter. The friend in question, still, is her partner, Hadane. Jasmine says that she feels relieved that he's down, because he's now her neighbor. She doesn't want Gino to know that she's living this close to her partner. Jasmine insists that her fellowship with her partner, when she freaks out about Gino indeed being gracious to a waitress, isn't hypocritical. Why? because she considers herself more secure than she considers him. Gino has demonstrated that he's unworthy of trust. But if Jasmine's so sure that she's doing the right thing, why keep it a secret? Dane hears about Jasmine's fights with Gino and the relative lack of closeness. He feels concerned. After all, he'd hoped that Jasmine and Gino would be doing better now that they were physically together again. He ends up recommending couples counseling to Jasmine so that she and Gino can compromise. Authentically, Jasmine and Gino are similar in awkward quintet. No way is this further apparent than when Jasmine says the goatish stuff to Gino, only to have him laugh uncomfortably. They're simply not on the same wavelength at all. The plan is to go outdoors and exercise together. Jasmine put sunscreen onto Gino's neck but decided that this wasn't enough protection. Laying him back onto the bed, she lathers up his legs while he compactly seems to disconnect. After a while, he's putatively into it, but it's just another illustration of how different their appetite situations are. Jasmine helps Gino to do syllables. She gets veritably sportful during this. Of course, she also sort of negs him about his thrusting during coitus. They ve only had coitus a sprinkle of times during their relationship, however, so she's pulling from a limited sample size. She says that occasionally his thrusts are robotic rather than him rolling his hips. Gino disagrees. Gino objects to the idea that he's not interested in her. Rather, he reiterates that their constant fighting kills the mood. Jasmine notes that there are times when they aren't fighting when he still seems disinterested. In Jasmine's mind, perhaps commodity is missing from their coitus life. On the one hand, some people have veritably specific kinks that hold their interest further than any other coitus act. But unless Gino falls under the order and hasn't told Jasmine, that's not the issue. If she thinks that she needs to season effects up, they ve only get it a sprinkle of times. It's way too beforehand for effects to be banal. At any rate, if Gino has been concealing any kinks from his fiancée, he's not participating them now. We do not see this as the issue. Yaira speaks English veritably well. Juana doesn't speak English. They're both veritably well apprehensive of Jasmine's issues with Gino, though maybe they've no idea how important she explodes at him. Or how strange their fights are from the outside. Jasmine's musketeers are veritably politic and friendly and indeed kind. Juana veritably actually notes that Gino looks good for his age, indeed if he's not her type. And she respects his butt. Jasmine is, as we know, a bit addict of Gino's booty. Yera asks this question in English, by the way. Jasmine replies that she has not. She also has not indeed told Gino about them yet, or about her but plan. After taking a comically long time to answer, Gino says that he has no way had anal coitus with any of his spouses. Why why did he take that long to answer? Indeed in front of her musketeers, he mentions that Jasmine was talking to some Joe. She was carrying evasively, and he learned that she was speaking to Dane. He doesn't understand why she hid this. Still, her musketeers assure Gino that she's unable of cheating on him. Yaira is veritably direct and honest with Gino, telling him that Dane is Jasmine's partner but also assuring him that he has nothing to worry about. But Gino notes that Jasmine would freak out if he did anything like this. Commodities going on, Gino fears, since Jasmine is hiding commodity from him. Yeah. While Christian is on his airplane. 
watching Bond pictures, and Cleo is getting ready at her reimbursement, they both feel analogous anxieties. Will they like each other? Will the same sparks fly in person? And will they indeed like each other? Soon, they LL both find out. Right after they see each other, Christian and Cleo clinch. Also, he gives her a kiss. Cleo had her dubieties about whether society's rampant transphobia would make Christian too shy to show her affection. While this is not a complete answer, it's clearly a start. Cleo tells him that he's out of my league. When she comments on her height in the negative, he tells her the high they are, the advanced I climb. Actually? This is really cute. That said, there are some awkward pauses that follow. Christian had some prejudiced family members who made some truly despicable reflections to him. He doesn't support that kind of spiteful gibberish, but the thing about living in a prejudiced society is that it trickles into our studies. You see a ain't just not be a partisan, you really need to laboriously challenge it in order to keep it out of your system. Cleo, too, prodigies if Christian is going to feel comfortable being with her. Christian jokes that he's so glad that America declared independence from these people, opining on the jarring weirdness of driving on the left side of the road. Especially, the vast maturity of the earth drives on the right side. And, significantly, the most popular and religious vacation in the world is a festivity of independence from the British. Truly, it's a sentiment that brings people together. Abra and Comey aren't as shy as numerous pussycats would be but are ain't as eagerly friendly as canine person Christian would anticipate from a canine companion. He and Cleo have a weird exchange about his title. He says that Cleo should just call him Uncle Christian since he's not their daddy yet. Cleo rightly points out that uncle would indicate that he's her family. Obviously, Christian just finished a long flight and an extended drive. There's a mix of awkwardness and affection. They re both just overthinking effects at every step. They kiss goodnight, but it's still awkward. Going to bed with someone for the first time can feel daunting. We cannot imagine that the presence of a camera crew, a smash mic driver, and directors in the room helps much. The two wake up after their veritably first night together. They had a good time, it seems, but there were a couple of interruptions as they tried to bone and neither of them spared any detail when describing what went down. They both, in fact, went down. David and Sheila were unfit to actually have penetrative, P in V coitus. It was uncomfortable for Sheila, indeed if she did show clear signs of sexual thrill. Simply put, he couldn't simply put himself inside of her. So they both performed oral coitus on each other. Sheila sounded not only pleased but a little surprised by how much he appreciated her body. Sheila notes that this may be why she was ain't physically ready. David comments that it's been four times for him, too. When Sheila asks how he managed during his time being single, his answer is egregious but the ASL for it's veritably funny. One is a set of cards to help her to learn sign language. This is enough crucial to the two of them getting to know each other. She formally learns that there's a sign for his name, David, without having to spell it. Limited utility for her, but veritably sweet. Will no way find the phone exchange thing normal, but at least they redoing it consensually. Supposedly, David and Sheila agreed to change phones after they meet. It's a trust thing. And maybe they both have some trust issues. Especially, it seems, Sheila. If you want to next part please do subscribe and turn on the notification button.